Hey folks, it's Enco Waterjet again, John Hennessy here. So today we're here to talk to you about water jet orifices, specifically uh, the different types of orifices, uh, what the pros and cons are of some of the uh, different orifices, and then also some of the different cutting heads uh, that are built uh, and are better for uh, different types of orifices. And then also, how do you tell if you got a good orifice, bad orifice, and uh, what are some things that affect uh, orifice life? So again, all things water jet orifices. Stay tuned. All right, so let's jump in. No matter what kind of uh, water jet cutting you're doing, whether it's abrasive or water only, uh, all water jet cutting uses an orifice, whether it's inside the abrasive cutting head or at the end of your nozzle tube doing water only cutting. And the job of the orifice is to create that thin, fine stream, take all that energy from the pump and harness it uh, like your thumb at the end of a hose, uh, get that velocity moving. So today there are actually three different materials that are available uh, for water jet orifices, whether you're doing again water only or abrasive cutting. Uh, what used to be the most popular, and they're still uh, used widely throughout the world, is uh, a ruby, sapphire, or what they call a corundum material. Uh, we'll get into the pros and cons of that here in a second. Uh, another very popular, was becoming more and more popular, is the diamond orifice material, which we'll talk about again here in a minute. And then the new material uh, that is kind of getting the buzz in the industry is a new material called uh, Tetracor. Uh, as you'll see with Henco, all of our orifices uh, come from a company called DTI. Uh, they are one of the uh, world leaders in uh, orifice technology, and so you'll see a lot of graphics here within this video today uh, that have been sponsored or provided by these folks. All right, the first orifice that we're going to talk about today is the Ruby orifice. Uh, Ruby, Sapphire, Corundum uh, was one of the first materials used in abrasive water jet cutting. Uh, it's been around the longest. Uh, one of the positive notes is uh, rubies are relatively, sapphires are relatively inexpensive. You know, they range from $12 to uh, you know, $20 a piece. Uh, the performance uh, when they do uh, perform uh, is good. I mean, they provide a good cutting stream and nothing wrong with them. Uh, but one of the issues we touched on earlier is that they are very inconsistent. Uh, again, if you're getting that, uh, you know, 10, uh, trying to use percentages, if you have 10 jewels, uh, usually, you know, 20-30% of them are going to go in a very inconsistent matter, which is you're running a water jet is hard to plan around. Uh, one of the other issues is relative to everything else in a water jet, it's, uh, it's short life. Uh, when you look at nozzles, pump components, you know, a lot of times we're talking, um, you know, hundreds of hours, and here we are talking about an orifice that lasts, you know, 30 to 50 hours. So on the other end of the spectrum, we have diamond orifices. Uh, diamond orifices uh, have been around for a while. They've become more and more popular as cutting heads, uh, specifically abrasive uh, cutting heads, have really been developed uh, lately to uh, maximize the life of the diamond orifice. Uh, so diamonds have the highest cost out there, uh, but with that highest cost is the best performance. Uh, and one of the uh, polar opposites of the ruby and sapphire is they are extremely consistent. Uh, when you go from diamond from diamond to diamond, uh, you can almost mark on a chart when they're going to fail. Uh, and so, uh, and again, opposite of the ruby, uh, they have the longest life available of any orifice material on the market today. All right, let's talk about the new orifice material uh, developed by our friends at DTI, uh, a new material called Tetracore. Uh, Tetracore was uh, developed as a uh, product that was supposed to be between a ruby and a diamond. It seems like you had the polar opposites um, as we've discussed earlier and so they came out with an, uh, kind of a middle of the line product. It has good performance. Um, it is closer to a diamond in terms of consistency standpoint uh, and is really in the middle of that lifespan. You're looking at a product uh, you know that's going to last in the hundreds, uh, maybe not uh, uh, like a diamond where it's sometimes you know, 800 to 1,000, but it's definitely in the, in the hundreds of hours um, as far as life expectancy. And cost, again, is uh, more than a ruby and uh, obviously less than a diamond. Uh, so you can see here with these three different materials, um, you know, we've got uh, you know, all ends of the spectrum. We've got the low end, the middle end, and the high end. Uh, and you can imagine, uh, you know, you start talking about, hey, which one of these should I use? Uh, well, one of the things we did at Henco is because of the the variance in life, um, one of the things we did is we actually developed three different cutting heads uh, each for uh, the different orifices. Uh, if you're running a ruby, you don't want a ruby inside of a cutting head uh, that's going to have a really expensive mixing chamber that lasts like two, three, four hundred or even a thousand hours 
if the jewel above it, the ruby, goes bad, it's going to take out everything downstream, including the mixing chamber and the nozzle. So our ruby cutting head, you'll see, uh, is a mixing chamber less, uh, carbide mixing chamber less, cutting head. It's basically the body of the cutting head, the ruby, and the nozzle. So when you look at the cutting head that we developed for the diamonds, uh, it's called our 1200D. Uh, quite frankly, we put in a mixing chamber that is equal to the diamond uh, to maximize the life. We don't want to get that abrasive uh, that's being entered into the uh, jet stream to eat away at the bottom of the orifice uh, and wear out the diamond. So one of the things we do is we created a nice mixing chamber maximizing the life of that diamond. And again, you'll see that in our 1200D. So the Tetracore is interesting because it's kind of that middle product. So we can actually use either one of our cutting heads. Uh, if you'd prefer to run it uh, in our uh, Ruby style cutting head, you can do that, no mixing chamber. Or if you're looking to you know, potentially run a mixing chamber because that's something you prefer, we can run that same orifice in our 1200D. So one of the most popular questions we get is, how do I know my orifice uh, has gone bad or is no longer good? And I guess one of the more common phrases we hear in the industry is the shower head. Uh, when an orifice is good, you'll see you know, what you appears to be a nice tight stream. Uh, if you can imagine what that looks like. Uh, whereas when the orifice goes bad, you'll get what appears to be a shower head or a much wider jet. So that's probably the most common uh, thing to look for. Uh, otherwise, it's easy to look for a poor cut quality. Uh, you could have faster uh, wear at the nozzle, uh, the exit side of the nozzle. Sometimes if the uh, orifice has gone bad, you actually see more of a tear drop shape at the exit side versus a nice concentric uh, circle. And then uh, based on what size orifice you use, if that orifice is tightly uh, sized to your horsepower or um, the direct drive size, um, you can get an overstroke in an intensifier. That's a really uh, easy way. And with the direct drive, if for whatever reason your pressure drops very quickly, uh, that's another sign uh, that the size of the orifice at the end of the uh, system has changed size, which is the result, uh, as a result, you'll get the lower uh, pressure rating. So another question that we get is, hey, is there a simple, easy way uh, to inspect the orifice uh, to tell if it's good or bad? Uh, quite frankly, one of the better things we'll see uh, at times is where people will take that small orifice, you know, 10 thousandths of an inch to 14 thousandths of an inch, and try to hold that up uh, into the light and see what that hole looks like. Uh, quite frankly, with the naked eye, that's, uh, you can tell if the jewel is still there. It's just very, very difficult to tell uh, if the jewel is blown or not. Uh, quite frankly, when a jewel is blown, uh, you can imagine a 360 uh, degree circle. And what you're lo actually looking for is the radius that makes the hole. Uh, quite frankly, it might be 10 degrees, 15 degrees of that radius is actually chipped away. And that's all it takes to make a jewel go bad. Uh, so, quite frankly, one of the best ways to inspect a jewel is under a microscope. Uh, and today, there's a lot of USB microscopes you can look for on the internet, $100 or less. Uh, this is a great opportunity uh, for individuals to inspect the jewels themselves versus having to send them back to a factory or somebody like Henco to inspect under our microscopes. Uh, there's another test um, uh, available to those that have intensifier pumps. It's called the low pressure test. Uh, if you can get uh, all of the pressure to drain through the cutting head, uh, i.e. turn on the pump at low pressure, hit the e-stop with the cutting head open, have somebody right there watching the stream as it uh, gets really low in pressure. We probably think it's around 1,000 PSI or so. That last bit of stream will come out in what they call laminar flow, which looks like a piece of monofilament fishing line. Uh, and if you're able to get that, uh, nine times out of ten you know two things. One is uh, that your orifice is good and that it's perfectly aligned uh, to your nozzle. If coming out the nozzle uh, tends to look like a shower head, uh, either way it doesn't matter, it means you got a bad jewel or it means that your orifice is actually misaligned, but either way uh, you're in a poor cutting condition. So one of the last things we want to talk about today is uh, the life and things that affect the life of all orifices. One of the things that we always touch about and we always hear about water jet is water quality, water quality, water quality, and it holds true with orifices. Orifices are one of the biggest things affected by poor water quality, uh, specifically TDS in your water. Um, the higher the TDS, the lower the life, and so it's really important to uh, understand and uh, know what your TDS is. Uh, so either A, that you can correct it, or B, just understand the environment uh, that you're going to operate in. Uh, so uh, also important is going to be maintenance procedures uh, when it comes to orifice life. If you, uh, when you break into the pump or you do anything at the cutting head or within your system, 
how clean is the environment? How clean are the folks' hands when they put all these parts back in together? Uh, if you're in a dirty environment, all that uh, uh, grime and dirt and dust has to come out somewhere and it has to come out the orifice. So, um, so on the other side of uh, procedures, uh, we look at startup procedures when you put in a new orifice. Uh, do you uh, turn on the machine and go right to 60 or 90,000 PSI and the first thing that hits that jewel is that super high pressure? Or do you start the pump up in low pressure, hopefully trying to seat that orifice um, and make sure that uh, um, it's got a chance? So um, other things that can affect filter life, especially if you're going to run a diamond or a tetracore, um, but it helps all orifices is to put in a thimble filter. Uh, you'll see a video coming out here shortly on thimble filters, but basically they call it a last chance filter, and it's an extremely small filter that you can stick close to the cutting head that will catch any particulates that are introduced into the system after your uh, inlet water filters. Um, another important factor when it comes to orifice life, uh, as we touched on earlier in the video, is the environment. What cutting head are you putting your orifice into? There are certain cutting heads, uh, especially in the embracing environment, that are not designed to run diamond orifices, or rather they're not optimized to run diamond. Uh, so that can greatly affect life, uh, which we can talk about um, in a minute. So uh, one of the other things uh, is a mitching chamber. Even if you have a diamond cutting head that is designed to run a diamond orifice, if you do not, uh, if, the di if the mitching chamber is worn out, uh, that's going to adversely affect the life of the diamond. Hey folks, thanks for joining us today as we're uh, here talking about abrasive water jet orifices and water only orifices. Uh, there's a lot more uh, to cover, but uh, again, what we really like to do is if you guys have more questions or uh, specific to your uh, application, give one of our water jet specialists at Henco a call. Uh, we love talking water jet. We'd like to hear from you folks and what your individual challenges are and see if we can help you maximize your water jet. Thanks and have a good day.